open session. We're turning to open session. It is 6.07 p.m. The first item on the agenda is to do the Pledge of Allegiance. And I'm going to pick on our superintendent since this is last meeting. Mm. Oh, there you are. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Superintendent Hope You're welcome. Okay, the next item is the announcement of reportable closed session action items if necessary. At this time, we don't have anything to report. We are going to have to go into closed session following the meeting um, because we did not have a quorum to be able to take a vote. Um, so we're holding those items until we conclude the um, open session. And then we will report out following the, the end of our closed session. Okay, do we have next uh, next up is approving the agenda. Do we have any changes to the agenda? Yeah, I have the change I'd like to request that we move items under uh, number 11, the staff reports, item number one and two. We move those up following the public comment on non agendized items between number nine and 10. And okay. with that, I move approval of the agenda. So we have a motion from Trustee Jackson to move items 11.1 .1 and 11.2 um, right after item 10, public comment and non-advice item, and to approve the amended um, agenda. Do I have a second? I'll say um, second and by Trustee Palma. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, it passes. With that, we are now moving um, to the special recognition portion of our meeting. Evening. So as everyone knows, um, our superintendent, Jim Hogaboom, this is his last meeting, no. not that he's counting the seconds. No. Um, but this is Jim's last meeting and he's going to retire after many, many decades of service for our education program um, and for really dog years of service <laughs> to the uh, Santa Fe City Schools. Um, and we're, we're gonna, I, I'm gonna get a chance to say more tomorrow at your celebration, but I wanna open it up to any other trustees that wish to make any remarks about Jim's, Jim as he, as he sets to leave us. Marina. Right. Yes. Trustee Palma. <laughs> Jim, I'm really gonna miss you. It has been a pleasure and an honor to work with you. Uh, I truly feel, feel how much you care about all students and that really inspires me to keep on advocating for all of them. Thank you so much for everything you've done, how much you have pushed that uh, together in 2024 now, and all the improvements that have happened ever since uh, uh, I've been working with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I hope you come back. <laughs> Not to work. No. Just to say hello. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jim, I just want to say thank you. You were the right man for the right time. You came in. Um, and and put in place a number of things that I hope mm -hmm. stick uh, mm -hmm. because they, they really make a difference in our school district and I could see that and just the way you held our students up all the time and I'll, I'll have six words to say tomorrow but uh, I really am grateful for the time I got to work with you as board president I know Gina's enjoying it um, because you just have such an idea, you have such an idea of the big picture, and but you pay attention to the small things that matter as well. So thank you for your service. Yeah, I thank you so much for your service, Jim. I know that the last you know few years, especially after you know during, 20, during the pandemic, what was it, 2020? Right? Oh my goodness. So those were tough years for administrators, for people in schools and, and and districts. And I think that you really showed up. And I, when I joined the board, and um, we were in the middle of COVID, so it was uh, a Trustee Palma and Trustee Daly. And I think that um, it really meant a lot to have someone who really was so strongly in a position of leadership and has such a success, really rallying the troops and rallying the folks doing the work, because otherwise I don't think we would have been able to get through those very difficult times. So I am very grateful that you were at the helm during those times because you really showed your leadership skills. And you also, as Linda mentioned, I'm, 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 I'm very happy to see so many policies 
policies, so many operational changes that have happened at the district to streamline processes, to improve evaluation, to really have a strategic uh, vision of what the school district uh, should look like in the future. And hopefully we are in a good path to do our next strategic planning to whatever is gonna be together 2028 or whatever. So I think that really sets it up for success. And then on a personal level, you are a joy to work with. I mean, it is absolutely a joy. You have set up the tone in the district office. When we walk in, we know that this is a place where I will say most people really enjoy working at. And I think uh, culture um, eats strategy for breakfast. I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. And if you do not have a good culture, you can have a lot of strategy, but you create a culture that allows for strategy to succeed. So thank you. Thank you. And with that, we, we wanted to, on behalf of the school district, give this to you. Um, and oh, yeah, cool. let's see what it is. Yeah, we'll see it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. You can put it in your new retirement. Yeah, home. I know. It's great. Congratulations on retirement, Jim Hugaboom. Thank you for bringing equity, community, and joy to Santa Fe City Schools. So, oh, yeah, it's thank you. Oh, thank you. Exactly. it's going to look great. <laughs> You can put you can yeah, it can also, still, my can kids, also be used as a weapon. Yeah, my kids can always get out of line. Self-defense. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, Jim, it's it's hard to believe that this is your last oh, meeting. So um and I I will just say in, in closing, because I, I am gonna get a chance to say more tomorrow. Um you know, for a new board member coming on, it can be very overwhelming. There's a lot of information, there's a lot of moving parts. We have seven thousand kids, we have you know, lots of employees, um, and you really um, helped educate us, new board, our new board members, in a way that was not um, demeaning. You honored us, you honored what we brought, the lens that we brought into the work, and really helped us understand the information that we needed to be able to make decisions and have the governance model that we have. So thank you for that. Thank you. And he he also appreciates a strong woman, which I always appreciate. So, and so does your wife, Gwen. Um, with that, we're going to move on to uh, announcements. So, um, do we have any labor union members online? We do. Let's go to them first. All right. We have Brianna with her hand raised first, so that's all right. We'll go with that. I'll, I'll, Morgan, I'll move you over as well. Ready. Hello. Um, of course, right away. Oh, as I raised my hand, my dog started barking. Uh, am I first or is Morgan first? You're first, Brianna. Okay, perfect. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I am Brianna Padilla, president of the San Rafael Teachers Association for our TK through eighth grade educators. And tonight, SRTA would just like to share some of the teacher leadership teamwork where teacher leaders from Davidson and Venetia Valley Middle Schools have collaborated with high school teams uh, to dive into some work where uh, they've been identifying priority standards, standards-based uh, learning and grading have been a big part of that work, uh, and then some professional development planning. Uh, the team has met over the last two years, and then the last two days, uh, they've been together to plan for next year's professional development and continuing this work. Um, so thank you to Tyler and Jim for leading this work and bringing um, this impactful work to San Rafael to support our students through our LCAP goals and for really developing a leadership team of SRCS uh, educators. Uh, the positive shifts from this um, that are going to be, you know, we're seeing it in our students' learning experiences um, and that's what makes this work the most meaningful. Um, and then to keep it just short and sweet for, for Jim's last day here, um, we uh, would just like to wish everyone a happy summer season. Uh, wish Jim off into his happy retirement um, and Amy again um, off into her new role. Um, so thank you and that's it for us. Thank you, Brianna. Morgan. There we go. Good evening. I'm Morgan Agnew, president of the San Rafael Federation of Teachers, and I'd like to ask your forgiveness for addressing an agenda item rather than giving a general report. I'm here to speak with you tonight about the proposed administrator salary schedule. SRFT does not represent administrators. I'm here to speak to you on behalf of our members, not my colleagues in administration. 
Our members have a strong interest in being managed and evaluated by competent professionals, and a good administrative team sets the tone for the entire school, making a profound difference in the educational experience of all students. We want to ensure that the district has the ability to hire and retain the best deans, assistant principals, and principals in the region. As you are no doubt aware, this has been a challenge in recent years. I'm not saying anything negative about our current administrative team, but the amount of turnover we've had in administration, combined with the number of acting principals and assistant principals, suggests our recruitment and retention of site administrators could use a boost. Given that, we applaud and support the district's efforts to revise and combine administrator salary schedules. We should put all district administrators classified and certificated on one salary schedule for transparency and clarity. We should reevaluate the salaries of administrative positions in comparison to each other and to neighboring districts. And we should offer more than 10 steps on our administrator salary schedules. These are all good changes. SRFT compared the currently proposed salary schedules to those on SRCS.org, which are from 2021, 2022. And we, comp we computed the percentage raise being offered to each position across that two year time span. Again, to be clear, we did not look at specific employees. Each individual administrator will earn more by virtue of advancing two years along the salary schedule or by being placed in a different spot on the new scale in comparison to the old one. We looked at the positions, which is exactly what prospective employees will look at when they consider applying for a job with us. Across the two year time span between those two salary schedules, the pay for a first year assistant principal at the high school level will go up just 2% per year. A 10 year veteran assistant principal will do better as their salary will increase 3.6% per year, which is still less than the increase in the Bay Area cost of living and considerably less than SRFT's raise across that time period, which remember is based on a fair share formula that should leave ample new revenue to fund classified and administrative salaries. A 10 year veteran dean will earn less than 1.5% more each year. In comparison, veteran high school principals will see increases of approximately 5.5 to 6% per year, depending on years of experience. Those sorts of raises are in line with SRFT's recent settlements and beat Bay Area CPI. But then we come to senior directors and deputy superintendents. A five-year veteran senior director will see almost 7% annual salary increases, and a 10-year veteran deputy superintendent will earn 8.5% more per year. SRFT does not believe it's necessary or fair to increase the salary of top-level district administrative positions more than four times as much as entry-level administrative positions. Yes, senior-level district administrators have difficult jobs, and yes, we want to recruit top talent for those positions but that is equally true of every other administrator who works in our district. If we can afford seven to 8% annual raises at the senior director and deputy superintendent level, SRFT believes we should provide comparable raises at the site level. We urge the board to reject the administrator salary schedule as proposed and ask for one that is equitable, not regressive, with raises for site level administration in line with senior administration. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan. Do we have anyone from CSEA? Seeing none. Okay. With that, um, let's go to the board trustee updates. Um, Marina, do you want to go first since um, we, you didn't have an opportunity to give a board update at our Monday meeting? So if there's anything you wanted to share in terms of your activities, uh, feel free. I attended the uh, Davidson uh, Middle School graduation. I attended Venetia Valley graduation. Mm -hmm. I went to an immigration forum where I met with uh, uh, Pepe and Cecilia. And uh, what else did I go? Did I see you somewhere else? City council meeting. In the right. city council meeting, yes. <laughs> so That's funny. I've been doing a few things. Okay, thank you, yeah. Trustee Palma. Does did. anyone, I mean, we, we did just meet on Monday, so. Nothing new to nothing report. Report. I was gonna say, if there's, if there's nothing new to report, okay. we will move on. Um, okay. And uh, our student board members are taking a summer break as they should. Jim, is there anything you'd like to say? Or should we move um, on? I think we can move on. Okay. All right. We're going to move on to public comment 
on non-agendized items. Um, do we have anyone either in the room or online who wishes to make a public comment? And as a reminder, if you are online, uh, please use the raised hand function. Same then. Okay. Um, next, per the amended uh, agenda for today, we're going to go to education services, local control and accountability plans, local indicators. Is this? Yes, I can take okay, it. Or Christina. Okay. So um, this is um, a new requirement for the state, and it's something that we are pleased to present to you about our LCAP. So as you may know, um, part of the local control and accountability plan calls for having state indicators, which are directed by the state, and we have to call those out in the LCAP, as well as local indicators, and we have to call those out in the LCAP, and we have to have at least one item um, for each of those local indicators. And then in the fall, um, you may remember that um, the education services team primarily reports out on how we are doing. So we are measuring ourselves with these indicators. And um, that goes as part of our California school dashboard. So it's a new practice that we present to you, which is attached in the item where our local indicators are in our LCAP. So you can see them in our LCAP, and we are pleased to have this extra document to accompany the LCAP that we are presenting to you tonight with that information. So, okay, thank you, Christina. Um, next item on the agenda is our capital facilities program uh, bond measures B and C budget and program update presentation bill. Good evening, board members, uh, superintendent, members of the community. Uh, I'm Bill Savage, the Bond Program Manager with Penfell Construction Services, and uh, I'm excited to be here tonight to give you an update on the Capital Facilities Program because we haven't really had a chance to report to you since I think Dan left in January, maybe doing a presentation then. And uh, it would be a, an understatement to say there's a lot going on uh, in our Capital Facilities Program, and so we're really happy to be here to talk with you about that. I um, want to give you, as an agenda, just an overview of the program and where we are. You have a handout at, at your table also if you need to follow along. As as, at some point, we're going to get into pictures and, and slides that are going to be a little small to read on the screen. That's why we give you a handout so you can follow along if you need to. Um, we're going to walk you through the elementary district priority projects, the high school district priority projects, other projects in design and construction, and then a program budget update, which is a precursor to an action item tonight uh, that we're uh, bringing to the board and a brief uh, review of the schedule for the program. So we're at, just as a general overview of where we are now, we're finishing up the very last projects from measures A and B 2015 bonds. There's still a few pennies left um, in the bank. And we're basically going through and scrubbing all those budgets and putting them together and using them uh, in some of the projects that you see here, the Davidson uh, uh, Middle School and Annex HVC, HVAC and Roofs project, which has gone on over two and a half years, uh, bringing air conditioning to Davidson for the first time, repairing all the roofs at Davidson. And we're also gonna be building new restrooms at Venetia Valley to replace the old portable, the and portable. And we have the project that you see starting in front of you here at Terra Linda and district office. So the new uh, TL East quad that's gonna, that was just demoed uh, yesterday and today and the new ceramics kiln building that's going in outside uh, on, on the uh, back quad that will replace that um, somewhat shady uh, building that was uh, leaned against the new classroom building for a long time. So we're really happy to get those underway. We are also starting the first projects under measure, measures B and C, including a lot of bond program implementation work, selections or requests for qualifications and proposals for our architects, program project management, surveys, geotechnical engineers, inspection, uh, CEQA consultants, commissioning, et cetera. We have two CEQA consultant proposals on your calendar uh, for tonight for our EIRs. We're also engaged with our architect teams and at each site, we're doing master plan confirmation. So we have them, we look at the master plan. Here's what's in the plan. How does that shake out in reality where we are now? We confirm the priorities with the site committee and go through that process and get ready to start the modernization projects at our elementary and our high school sites. 
So I would say the, the biggest focus at the elementary district is on transitional kindergarten facilities. And we're supporting what is a key statewide and district-wide educational priority for our, our district and all over the state. So it's important to remember that new TK facilities were included in the bond. They were included as part of the master plan and they were shown at um, Glenwood, Venetia Valley and Short, three sites. And right now we're proposing to expand that to include Coleman and Sun Valley. And we're gonna be building, we're proposing to build, and you'll, we'll show you slides from each of these tonight. We're proposing to build two TKK classrooms at Coleman, three at Glenwood, three at Sun Valley, two at Venetia Valley, two at Short. And I'll show you, a, I've got a matrix and we can look at what that, what, how that math works out. A key bullet at the bottom, and you've already probably heard some of this, we are displacing after school program portables at two sites, Sun Valley and Glenwood. And we're working with those uh, sites from a, both a programmatic standpoint. Go ahead, Bob. Coleman and Glenwood. I'm sorry, Coleman, Coleman and Glenwood. Oh, yeah. How can I forget? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sorry about that, you guys. So um, we are working, uh, Bob has been working with principals in terms of the uh, integrated programs at the site. And I've been working uh, together with Bob and the principals on how do we, are there ways that we can help to deal with the loss of the centralized program space in a, from a facility standpoint. And I'll show you some of those as we get to them. So I wanna make, we use the word compliant when we talk about facilities. This is Title V of the California Code of Regulations, which is the facility standards for kindergarten buildings or transitional kindergarten buildings. And you can see 1,300 square feet buildings, for example, including a restroom, including teacher prep, storage, et cetera. And it goes through each of the standards about the play yards. Uh, we have many non-compliant K and TK building uh, classrooms in the district. And a real key part of what we're doing is we're really raising the overall level of compliant facilities that we have available that can be used not just for TK, but also for K in the future, depending on where the enrollment goes and how that shakes out. We're also using, you'll notice that there's there are standards for the play yard, including activity design, location adjacent to the buildings, et cetera. There's no square footage standard here. So what we're using as the square footage standard is the 70 square feet per student standard that's included in the preschool standards for the state. And so it's a, it's a great standard. It works well with the age group. And so that's where, but, but it takes a lot of space. So uh, it's uh, part of our overall program. And you'll see some, some of this as we get, through, get into this. This is the sort of the facilities by numbers for TK. Um, we're, as, as mentioned, we're proposing 14 new classrooms and the breakdown at the site. I'll show you what short looks like when we get to that. And there's a, there's a concept design there. Um, you can see the current TK compliant classrooms at those sites, proposed compliant classrooms, and then classrooms that, or programs that get displaced by this. So for example, at Glenwood, not just is the, uh, is the after school program portable being displaced, but a, a semi underused portable is getting displaced and a current kindergarten portable is getting displaced. And so this is part of the overall kind of chess game that we're playing. And at Venetia Valley, I'll show you what we're looking at there where, where we're proposing to demolish uh, an existing wing to build a new TK building. And we, we can look at that. We're just about to get, get into there. A key element of what we're doing is stakeholder engagement. And this is, the, this is uh, provided by our architects, our amazing architects at Glenwood. Here are all of the meetings and the different types of groups that we engaged with just at this site between March and June. So you can see 
We had a kickoff with the site. We had a TKK user group. We had a facilities committee to get input on overall site priorities. We had an admin staff and librarian. We had another TK user group. So we had a key group of teachers coming forward, providing input, helping us with our standards and looking at the classrooms and the layouts. We met again in May twice, and then we're coming to you now. So um, this is similar at every site, and it's similar at the high school sites. Not quite as intense at the high school sites where we've been mostly focused on the aquatic centers, but at San Rafael High, for example, we've also had uh, user group meetings looking at the visual and performing arts projects and the classroom modernizations. And at TL, the same thing, classroom modernizations has been a key focus. So we've, we have, we've been busy, let's, I would say. <laughs> and Bob has been great and he's come to as many of these as he can, he, as he could, and he's been really supportive and he's been, he's been diving into the facilities weeds. So <laughs> he doesn't have enough going on. Right? I know exactly. <laughs> I've enjoyed every minute. That's why he needs a new senior director. So here we go. Um, we're going to go through each of the sites. I'm sorry. I just I, I'm taking a little time, and I let me know if I should. You know, give me the high sign if I need to speed it up. But I want to let everyone know what we're doing because we're bringing you budget updates associated with some of these as we go forward. So that's part of our other action item. So at Sun Valley, the proposal at Sun Valley is to build a new facility you can't uh, i can't the laser doesn't really work but you can see in the box there um three tk classrooms and a new tk playground will displace the existing basketball courts which you can see then get moved over to the left on the slide and then that also displaces the shade structure that they eat in and that's proposed to be moved up in where you see those kind of wedges uh, still outside of the MPR. So it's a little bit of a domino effect on this campus. This, believe me, we tried very hard with our architects and the site committee to wedge the new buildings, classrooms into the existing TKK yard that's at the right top of this. It, it's just, it wouldn't work. Uh, there's a whole lot of site constraints and the playground is already too small. So we ended up with this approach and this gives us a lot of flexibility for this site in the future because many of this existing, the only existing compliant classroom is that B wing that's next to the upper end of where the parking drop is. All of the other kinder spaces are in 850 square foot classrooms in the upper wing or in the top uh, the, above the U on the uh, area above there now. So this is a great design to give flexibility. What we heard at this site as we looked ahead for modernization planning, air conditioning. Mm -hmm. They have three wings, A, B, and C with no air conditioning. And so that'll be a focus, one of their first focuses for uh, modernization. One of the options that we're looking at, this shows the TK wing, the three classrooms, the layouts. A couple of things to notice is the restrooms are integrated into each of the facilities. They, the restrooms also have an outside door so students can come from the playground and go right into the best bathroom and use the bathroom. Um, we're looking at a proposal or, a, or the concept of using a modular building system. So similar to the six classroom wing that we built at San Pedro, mm -hmm. that was a modular building system, customized, standing seam metal roof, skylights, um, stucco finish that integrated well. So that's part of the concept that you see here in the uh, elevations and the section. And this one has a clear story that will bring natural daylight into the classroom. Let me know if anybody has any questions as we go on to. So Coleman is an extremely challenging site. It's, it's basically, it's tiny and it's built out. And uh, the proposed location of the TK facilities, which is in the back of the site, uh, impacts two existing portables, the city program and a fourth grade classroom. It also impacts the playground and basketball courts. The, we looked at trying to create access off of Watt, but there's been so many issues 
with, with access there and with concerns about traffic and neighbors that we really have kind of walked away from that. And we were anticipating that students would come from the, from the front. We have been looking at creating a building and I'll show it to you on the drawing coming up that would replace the uh, after school program building that's removed. And we're just getting started on planning it. So the TK facilities are in the, the blue, um, two blue squares on the right hand side with the adjacent playground area in a kind of wedge there. And that's the fire lane that gets rerouted onto campus and the dot that kind of angles through. The pink building is proposed to be an app, expanded learning opportunities hub center where a fully integrated program would go uh, meet after school, kind of get their marching orders, maybe do homework, uh, has a couple of offices and storage areas in it. And it would also have an, the proposal is an outdoor area with a shade structure over it and tables and benches, which would kind of double the space. Because on most days at Coleman, as many of our schools, outdoor space is just as good as indoor space for a lot of that kind of stuff. So this is in, that part of this is in the early planning stages. And we're, we're really, uh, I'm, I'll see if you wanna make a comment or anything. Oh. No, I, I think um, we're trying to be responsive to the community's um, mm -hmm. you know, concerns and, and needs, and also at the same time, make sure that we have as much flexibility with the spaces that we're building as possible. So as things change in the future, we're, we have that ability. So um, I think it's a, as good a plan as we can come up with under the circumstances. Yeah, I mean, um, we, we heard a lot from the site. Why don't you build two stories? And <laughs> anyway, that does continue to be a, a request. And it is not possible. Why not? Well, it, it's extremely difficult because um, remember, the, the, we can't, first of all, we can't put lower grade students, anything, anybody below second grade in a second story. So, I mean, in theory, we could build on the existing buildings, but it's such a difficult approval process through the Division of State Architect. When we make structural changes to an existing building, it, the, the approval process it, it puts us into a major code upgrade to meet current codes when we add those loads. So it's in general, adding on a second story for school buildings is in California is really not, and not, a, not a good way to go. And not to mention a finite budget for that school and that site. And so, you know, that just adds significant costs. Mm -hmm. And accessibility, I presume, because you need a way- You'd have to have an elevator. Yeah, yeah, then then elevator. you have to have an elevator, which adds costs, repairment, maintenance, yeah. et cetera. And all, and all the code. Yeah, all exactly. Code. So on top of everything that you have to build that, which is extraordinarily expensive. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. that the ELOC at that location, yeah. it works. The fire lane gets by. There's enough space. It's potential. So we'll continue to keep you. Is there any concern the with eyes on the playground during recess and lunch with the new pink building there? Um, yeah, it's a little bit harder, you're right? And so it's even with the new uh, TK facilities located there. I mean, you look Al to, yeah. Alex, the principal there, has been working with us all along, okay. and, you know, and we we have more meetings that we'll have to have with him to mm -hmm. sort of talk through talk some through of these it. things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's all working it's in the community, and yeah. eventually you'll get there. So very good. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, here's a little bit of a blow up of the of two different classroom options. And I'll give you an idea of the richness of the facilities that would create multiple learning areas within each of the classrooms, areas for the teacher, reading areas, quiet areas, et cetera. So these are really ri very rich environments for our TK students. On the right side is an idea of one of the playgrounds. Just as an example, one of the best things, if you, if you can see it, a mud kitchen. Mm -hmm. I mean, who doesn't want a mud kitchen, really? When you're, when you're <laughs> Joel, uh, or, you know, so yep. these are the kinds of things that we're looking at. Almost all of our outdoor areas will include eating tables with a shade structure, like a canvas shade structure over them. This is a critical component yeah. for TKK, having an, having an eating area. So uh, Glenwood. I didn't put this on the whole site plan, I apologize, but if you're facing the school at Glenwood, this is on the right-hand side, 
as you face the school where the existing TK building is right up at the top right now. And we're proposing to build three new classrooms and they make an L at the bottom and in essentially engage all the way up through the site to create a combined TKK playground that would meet the square footage requirements for both the TK and K student population at the site. And it's adjacent to the current uh, K, which is at the end of the second wing there, and the current TK, which is up on the uh, top. And this, this, as mentioned, requires removal of three uh, other classrooms. Um, we are also proposing to include the renovation of the main play yard to the right of the TK as the, at the tail end of this project, because we realized that we, we didn't want to walk away from this major playground improvement and have this extremely distressed current playground, right? We just didn't think that was going to be a very good look. Yeah. And, and, and if the site work can be done at the end where, the, where they're essentially doing the grading, paving at all of the work, it'll be more efficient. So this will be our proposal is that we would continue, take, that, take this opportunity to do the main playground space, which is a priority from their master plan. At Glenwood, one of the key modernization projects is to deal with the old MPR. It's underutilized, it's filled with junk storage. Um, uh, the, the kitchen does not meet, the serving kitchen does not meet any kind of environmental health codes. And so the proposal is to rip the stage out, take out all the existing walls. The building has a overall structural beam system that allows a lot of flexibility on the interior. And so we would put a fully compliant kitchen and serving area, new dining space, and then modify the back to create the extended expanded learning opportunity center hub, which would also have doors that open into the MPR so they could use that space <coughs> as part of their process. So this is uh, responding to that issue of relocating that building and a major upgrade to a seriously underutilized piece of real estate in the middle of that campus. And, and just to remind folks that they have a brand new uh, multi-purpose room slash gymnasium yeah. with a stage. And so they're not losing this stage in this multi-purpose room does not impact their program. Okay. Venetia Valley. So you can see on the Venetia Valley site, we're looking at the area to the right of the MPR and as you face the site and the new classroom wing uh, behind the kindergarten building. We looked at renovating building I, which is the building behind the two kinder buildings. And it currently has four 700 and 800 square foot classrooms, something like that in it, that we would have to gut structurally rebuild the building. It, we, we went through a process of looking at it under the new DSA regs and decided that it would be more cost effective and much better facility for us to build a new facility at that site. Uh, it's, this is a very tight area of what's actually a pretty good sized site. This area where the lower grades are is extremely tight. It's bounded by the fire lane that wraps around uh, adjacent to the neighbor's properties. Um, but what we're, pro what we're proposing is a pretty creative use of the fire lane, which is to include it in the area of the TK play yard by only putting paint striping on the pavement and adding a small gate to keep the play, you know, the rest of the kids from, from out of there and you know, vice versa. So the proposal here is a two classroom building that you see at the bottom in white, uh, eating area on the kind of pat patio overlooking the um, playground area, uh, shade structure over the water play zone, water and mud were the two key play requirements for this age group when we went, when we worked with our teachers a play structure, some use of either artificial turf or poured in place, uh, safety surfacing, combinations of those. And you can see, a, a, I think a really rich <coughs> playground area that would be part of this project. Okay, 
Let's go to I just short. Note that go there's ahead. two neighbors that might be impacted, and we try to be good neighbors and reaching out and letting Oops. them know. So, um, how do I just want to get that on the radar yeah. screen so that they're not? I'll do it. No. Okay. Thank you. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, we we still have some neighbors at Venetia Valley uh, that are that have leftover concerns related to the field. Right. Well, these are the ones that are going to be new concerns about the playground right on the other side of their fence. Okay. So these yeah, are going to be very. Yeah. Did, did we put some trees in there like we thought about? But the, between the no, fence, we and actually them. put a uh, a low trees. ball fence in, and it provides very effective screening to the student from the students view but we still are getting calls from the neighbors wanting us to put landscaping and trees into there so it's one thing i can follow up with our our new director and i walk through the side yeah with the new we walk through the side and i think this is something we could follow up on yeah. because it's not as cost effective it's not, cost a, huge cost. It's not a huge cost so yeah. that's what i was also walked through the property the other day i thought about it yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so at short school uh, we're looking, this is a, a plan that would propose to reconfigure the six uh, smaller classrooms. They're, they're roughly, they're like 900 square feet, 800, right in that neighborhood. This, this building was originally a, an open plan type building. And the, we're proposing to remove the walls. There's four walls that were placed after the building was built. They're right here here, um, here, and here. And if you take those out and put a wall in under the glue lambs here, you can create four 1300 and change square feet classrooms that meet the state standards for TK or pre-K. There are two restrooms already in the corners on the bottom. And we found plumbing diagrams for restrooms on the upper corner so we could have directly adjacent restrooms and fully compliant spaces. We're, we're looking at uh, our, our um, working with Community Action Marin on potentially relocating two pre-Ks to the site. Do you wanna talk about it any more, Bob? Uh, sure, yeah, we've been having conversations with Community Action Marin about their programs. There's two classrooms at the, what they call the Canal Children's Center, which is on the courtyard, you know, that, building which um really is in not great shape and we you know would yeah. need to sort of move them out of there at some point anyway and then there's two classrooms at the san pedro campus and so we're we're working with them to think about moving those um those programs onto this campus along with Laurel Dell's TKs mm -hmm. and potentially other district uh, programs like our early intervention program and create a uh, just like an early childhood center with community partners and district programs. And so it, it's the vision of it is exciting. And of course, the devil's in the details at this mm -hmm. moment, but um, but it's an exciting vision and and I think a you know re rebirth of this mm -hmm. campus, which is would be great. Okay. Does that mean Stephanie can't sneak in at night with her kids <laughs> playing playground anymore? I won't be there. Either. There'll be a special <laughs> gate, <laughs> a tunnel built from one area to the other. We've been we, we've been working with Stephanie, and uh, I asked her for a list of potential program space needs, and she sent me this like. <laughs> anyway, it's, been all, it's all been good. So Davidson Middle School, the multi-purpose building uh, for Davidson is the largest single project in the elementary district. And it's a project that was started when Bob was principal and we deferred it uh, in favor of doing air conditioning and adding HVAC to the site. We're back now to look at it and we have a preferred plan and we have a preferred location, but this is the FEMA 100 year floodplain map. And you can see the Davidson site, the gym, the admin 10, 20 wing, 40 wing uh, above the flood zone. And you can see the rest of the site uh, under the 100 year flood waters. Uh, when, when projects 
go for DSA approval that are within the 100 year floodplain. Uh, the requirements are intense. First of all, the building has to be raised a foot above the 100 year floodplain. And so, um, that's a when we the preferred location we went through a planning process with the site committee the preferred location is in the back which is on the one on the right that you see here uh we had an initial design that we loved i think uh president daly even saw that mm -hmm. design and uh, <laughs> we got a call our, our budget for construction just net construction not project budget was about 14.3 million the estimate came in at 28.6 million dollars and over six and a half million dollars of that was just to raise the building up above the floodplain. And it was a large area. It wasn't just the building. It was all the site work surrounding it to create a great plaza, quad, etc. So needless to say, we've gone back to the drawing board and with our architects and they've done a great job looking at, is there a potential location up front? That's what's shown on the left. And or and or how do we reduce the size of the building but still meet our program? How do we reduce the size of the outside quad areas so that we can keep our costs under control? So we're working with them and cost estimating teams, and we're gonna we'll have we need to come back to. We don't have anything yet, um, although we would anticipate. I, I would say the site's interest and almost everyone on the committee's interest and Bob if I can characterize it, <laughs> is that the, the building probably works best for that site in the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're really trying to get there, um, it, but it is going to mean, that, so eventually we're going to have a successful project. I would anticipate that we would come to you and recommend a project that's as close as we can get it to our budget and as close as we can get it to meeting our program needs and the preferred location that would require us to move money from the Davidson modernization into that project. We're, mm -hmm. we're not showing that tonight, anything on the budget adjustment, but that's our, that's kind of where we're heading, I think, but it's not open for comments. So it'd be, a, oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. I was gonna say, so it'd be more of a real allocation from the site budget we're as opposed the to um, taking from other sites to fill the gap. That's what I, that's, okay. I, because so much of the measure already is, is going to already Davidson. going to Davidson, <laughs> it's yeah. hard to justify yes. pulling money yeah. from the other sites. But obviously, that's the yeah. board's that's the board's decision to make. So another option is we do have apparently some capacity for more cops, and we could uh, the their uh, certificates of participation. Mm. Yeah, mm. and so that's how that's we funded uh, the increase. Actually, I think that's how we funded Bahia Vista. I think it's about 20 years year ago, with the first bond yeah. measure we ran short. Bahia Vista was <coughs> completely rebuilding, and we used cops that we're still paying for. You'll see it in the budget, mm -hmm. but yeah. we have capacity for some, so that's some, uh, so something to think about then. Potential source. I I think we should see what the but like as close as we can get it, and then I think we we that's when we look at is there a shortfall, and do we need to think about. My goal is to get a, a construction cost estimate that starts with a one and not a two. <laughs> yeah. We'll take that. We'll Can take I ask that. you about Davis? Yeah. Yeah. Anything about uh, updating those bathrooms? Yeah. Well, the, those the, are really bad. I mean, no, I've been the there like that are on the playground. You're talking about the ones yeah, right here. Yeah, I didn't see it. Thank you. Yeah. I just want to make sure yeah. because yeah. I know which so, bathrooms are you talking about. Those are going to go away. Oh, they're 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 now. Away. Are they going to be replaced? Uh, the playground, those are those are going to be demolished, and they'll be replaced by new bathrooms in the proposal. Well, they have some portables right now, and yeah. they also have the regular ones. Yeah. Talking about the portables, obviously, I hope they go away. But I'm talking about the regular ones. Okay. Those are really bad shape. Okay. They're part um, of the modernization work. So yeah. yes. Awesome. Yeah, and I and I went to Davidson School. Not, I mean, this is not news to you, but it, it does need a little bit of TLC, like mm -hmm. paint, like some painting. A lot. Um, so just just the TLC. Like I see now how much the, like for the painting job does yeah, make, it makes a difference. A difference. Yeah. yeah, and difference. I would love to see some of that incorporate. I mean, I'm sure you're thinking about. I mean, this is not news to One you. One of the major things we're thinking about at Davidson is the window systems in the classroom wings are seriously deteriorated. Uh, for example, not just the wood windows in the 1020 wings, which are rotting, yeah. 
and, and the paint jobs on them look terrible. But also we have jealousy windows in the in the 3040 wing and at the annex. You know the jealousies, right? To completely inefficient energy. Uh, nothing to be jealous about. Oh, no. <laughs> not that right. you were there at that time. But the, the, paint, the paint, again, and I'm willing to talk of entertain some of the things that uh, Trustee Jackson mentioned, because Davidson does need, I mean, it, it's our largest, basically. It's our largest. Oh, so yes. I am, like, it, it does require, and it is the one that probably, <laughs> You know, has all the challenges, and I think it's important that we create an environment, which I think is what you're trying to do. That this is not just for the sake of building infrastructure, right? You're creating an environment for children to learn Welcome, and to thrive, to feel welcomed, right? And I just would love to push a little bit on that. Um, and the whole community is on yeah. on softball. Yeah, yes. yeah. I would, yeah. I would like to request to make it a priority, yeah. David. Some please. Like some of these changes, right? Some of these yeah, some of the talking. changes at least yeah. because it's too. We can do better than that. I'm well, sure. I, I think part of what we're talking about, and I'll show you the next yeah. slide in a sec, is if if we build, if we get a multi-purpose building that meets our needs and yeah. it is a really great contribution to the campus and it will create a great community space for Davidson, yeah. and we do work on the field behind it. Um, this is the conceptual design for the field. Uh, to create a full-size soccer field for youth and a redone little league field uh, using artificial turf and a running track that goes all the way around for middle school running uh, this location. So I think this would be a huge transformation to the campus when coupled with the new multi-purpose. It's so needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm back as a parent and advocate for this. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm yeah. with you. I support you. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm sure Carolina, who will, her children, both yeah. her twins, will also go to Davidson. will be pleased to see that. I, I cannot speak for her. her. Yeah. But, so. like, you know, like for you, you were here. But she's yeah. like, yeah, absolutely. I. Um, so, it, would it be safe yeah. to say so? What I'm hearing yeah. is that. Davidson was already very much a yes, priority yeah, of this yes. bond, and it was the sort yes. of signature project of the elementary district. Yeah. Now, with the apparent sort of setback related to the flood zone, it's you know put a pretty big dent in maybe our capacity to do this transformational thing that you're talking about. So, you would like us to continue to look for ways to not lose, you know, just to make sure that we come in with something that's going to be um, amazing for the community. Yeah, yeah. and it could be paint plus plants. Yeah, like it could be green, like you go there and unfortunately it's very gray, right? It's a very gray environment. And now you go to Terlinda spaces and there's like a green incorporated with the modern. And, and there's, I think there's ways to do it that, the, that with the limitations that we have, that from a design perspective, could create a more welcoming environment, even if we have setbacks like what you mentioned. So like that, I think. that uh, area between the library and yeah. the 20 wing. Yes, that area. The pavement, not well, that. Not, not not that. Not exactly that. that. Yeah. Oh my God, that. project yes. for that in yes. the bond. Yes. <laughs> oh. But, but if we get to that point and yeah. we're coming to you again, yeah. you would want us to be thinking about what options there are to get creative around how to fund yes. something like that. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Just want to make sure I hear that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Yes. All right. High school. So at San Rafael High and at Terralinda High, we went through a process with our pool consultant to develop a district standard. And you'll see almost the exact same bullets for both San Rafael and Terralinda. The pools were a priority for the site and for the community and as part of the bond measure. Mm -hmm. um, both sites are proposed to get a 25 yard by 40 meter pool, which has full depth water polo, competition swimming, diving, cool. larger deck area with showers. And in this case, what you'll see is that the two sites have almost identical program, mm -hmm. but they're each unique in the response by the architects. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the proposal is to create a layout area with artificial turf and a small sloping mound for swimmers and their families with a shade over here. And then because Santa Fe's facilities are uh, in, in the gym and the locker PE areas are uh, inadequate, we're proposing to build a new 
uh, cheer building or field house, including a large, this is a full size mat right here for cheer, high, ceil high roof ceiling, uh, two team rooms, new restrooms, and a sports medicine facility for them that's available for the uh, for the stu mm -hmm. students uh, student athletes. So here's the bird's eye view proposed for oh, Center wow. Fell High. Oh, and I I wanted to make sure I put the little box on this bottom so that great. says we got our construction estimate yeah. and we're close yeah. enough to have a green on it. Um, you know, it, it's it's slightly over our budget but it's within shooting range. And, and partly it's over budget because it over our budget a little because we have such huge contingencies in it yeah. right now, yeah. given where we are with the design. So yeah. we believe it's appropriate for us to proceed. We don't need to make any budget adjustments at this time. So that's the field house on the left, uh, team rooms and restrooms. You can see the <laughs> shaded layout area. There's bleachers along the uh, end of the gym, the new pool, and then the equipment building on the right side with a concession entry stand for events coming in. And I just want to, um, wow. so the term value engineering is on there. This, this is used a lot in my household <laughs> whenever, <laughs> whenever we're talking about a new household project. It's basically how can you get accomplish the task for less money? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's what value engineering means. Mm -hmm. So you know, you're looking, you're looking at every possible way to sort of, sort of you know, penny pinch where you can. So uh, now let's look at Turland High. Uh, the bullets are almost identical. 25 yard by 40 meter pool. We're changing the orientation in this case on the pool, as you see. Uh, it's, it's similar, but it, we're, it, we're enlarging it. Uh, we're, we went through a long process with the architects about how we could use the existing mat uh, room building, uh, the existing cheer weight mat building uh, that's between the theater and the old gym. Uh, eventually, it was determined it would be just a better idea in terms of overall use and campus and pri educational priorities to knock it down and build a new one. Um, and so what we, uh, this building H is the proposed new building and it includes uh, weight, cheer, dance, mat rooms, um, workout spaces. You see the new pool. Um, this is uh, pool storage and the equipment rooms split here. And then we have a renovation to the existing locker rooms that you can see on the site there. Associated with this project, not a part of the budget for this project, is we're going to need to deal with the restrooms at the TL field. They're in, currently inside here. They're going to get demolished, but their current condition is not ADA compliant at mm. all. And so in order to upgrade the track, which we're involved in, because it doesn't it has a lot of issues, that we're for, being forced to renovate the bathrooms, but we're looking now at Let's put a bath restroom building in, similar to the one that you see at Santa Fe High. Um, mm -hmm. Those are modular restroom buildings with stucco finishes, um, standing seam metal roofs, and then a concession and ticket booth here. These locations are moving around, and we, in site committee meetings, they've gone in a couple different locations. And part of this is also to create a restroom and concession that could be used not just by the stadium, but also during baseball. For the, for the baseball field above that. And you're gonna remove the showers? Uh, gonna be updated. We are going to, uh, so yeah, hang on your seats. <laughs> we are proposing to demolish all showers inside the locker rooms. No one uses them. No one uses them. No one uses them. Yeah. <laughs> no the 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 there will still be outdoor showers there will be outdoor for swimmers showers. so they can rinse yes. off. Uh, the outdoor showers are after. Not but not. They're out on the deck. No one's using them? No, no one uses them. Any no specific reason for it? They didn't do it in my high school either. No one took a shower. Well, I, I never had that chance in my high school. But yeah. Stinky. <laughs> Boys used to Usually, it doesn't end up. But now they do it outdoor. So the people that the people that shower the the swimmers because yeah. they're yes. part of the pool. That's that's it. That's and that's those are the folks that just an outdoor shower. And they're gonna have them out. Okay. Oh, okay. Interesting. I, I'm sorry I didn't include a, a floor plan of the renovation to the lock, old locker building, but uh, that's great. I will show you some of the images. So, uh, on great. the right uh, is the proposed new building. 
with cheer, weight, mat room areas, wrestling, et cetera. And on the left is a view from the pool deck looking um, towards that building and actually towards the showers on the side of it. Um, uh, same, the, the cost estimate for this came in, for construction came in very close to our target. So we're proceeding and not needing any updates now, even though, you know, we're, we're in a kind of scary construction environment. Yeah, yeah. It, costs are rising and yet there's a lot of competition. Subs are hungry, and so there's a lot of competition. So we'll see how it plays out for us. I would only add that you don't see it in this view, but um, so where you're looking at the pool on the other side, sort of behind you and to the right, there's this really beautiful covered um, sort yeah. of cement seated sta stadium. So it, you could definitely have, you know, a, a couple hundred people right between the S and the T. So we're proposing essentially to almost build into the hill. The proposal is to pull off the roadway that goes around campus, put in a hammerhead for the fire truck, fire lane, have the fire lane come through here also, and then push this back as far as we can to take advantage of the kind of elevation of the hill and then build the bleachers in with a shade structure over the top. Yeah, it's going to be a great facility, actually. Um, we're Everybody's happy, except every meeting we go to, the pool people ask us, can't we build 50 meter pool? Yeah. No, we just say no. So <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so main, I'm almost done. I, I, I know it's taking a long time. This is important for us to get, for us yeah. um, Maintenance and operations facility adjacent to San Rafael High Fields. We've gone through a process with an architectural firm that we're working with that does a lot of maintenance facilities. We've had a great design process with Dave Fedroli, Tracy Brody, his team, uh, Bob, all of us in capital facilities. We have a proposed preferred plan uh, that looks at one of the major things, notice, we're proposing to push out the, the use area of maintenance of facilities to take a small piece of the fields, essentially right beyond left field, uh, no impact on the softball field, but it takes a slice and actually it lines up with the same line of the field's edge at the top on the northern edge of the site. There's a place where the fence comes down, it, it juts in mm -hmm. and then continues down and we're just proposing making one straight fence line all the way down and capturing that, I don't know, what is it like 30 feet yeah, or 30 something feet. like that? Mm -hmm. and, and the rationale is that the, the site itself is extremely narrow. And in order to create vehicle parking, pull in, pull out, consolidate all of the functions of the Northern site, we're basically proposing to walk away from m and use of the Northern area and consolidate all of that into here. And so the added square footage and the added width for allowing turnaround, vehicle parking, trailers, trucks, et cetera, is really helpful in the overall design. The preferred program, the cost estimate came in over our budget uh, by about $2 million. So we're working with the architects to come up and Dave and his team to come up with some alternatives that might incorporate further parts of the existing buildings, looking at different ways that we can uh, reduce the program and still meet the needs of the, of the facility. So we'll, we'll keep you posted as we get there. This is a budgeted project in the high school district bond measure, master plan. Just a quick add that we're proposing that part of this new courtyard would include almost like a warehouse shipping and receiving center. So I don't know if you've ever come down to the district office downstairs and there's pallets of boxes and things that are sitting in the hallway. The, the goal would be that those types of shipments would go to this courtyard and then get dispersed, um, you know, based on- To a different location from there. The most important thing that we're doing is we're gonna demolish the building that sticks out into the sidewalk here. Uh, there's a concrete block building that reduces the width of the sidewalk used by our students down from eight feet to five feet. And so we're proposing to demolish that and create a full width sidewalk for all of our students to make it a safer route as they go to the um, Go to Whole Foods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. 
Uh, okay, I think we're close. So other projects, yeah, we're real close. Uh, Venetia Valley Restroom Building. Uh, we've got the board is um, uh, has items to approve the roofing of Venetia Valley uh, Kinder Wing, which was in seriously deteriorated state. But that's part of the modernization at Venetia. Uh, we have the Terra Linda CTE Shade Structure Project. We're working with MCOE. Uh, and that is uh, out to bid, and we're asking for delegation of authority to the superintendent when, as soon as we get DSA approval to award that contract. Uh, the woodshop roofing uh, at Terra Linda High and will eventually include HVAC, new fences and gates at the gym area, the storm drain at um, San Rafael High, our phase one project to expand the storm drain system around the gym. So we want to put millions of dollars into a building that floods. <laughs> This is our overall goal. Uh, putting audio visual systems into the commons. We're starting design on the TL Wellness Center. And we're looking at fencing and gates for uh, Centerfell High so we can create a closed campus and a more secure campus for our students. Uh, and we're looking at a preliminary review of district office improvements with a preliminary focus on ensuring that we have adequate ADA compliant restrooms for our staff and for the public on both floors mm. of this building. That would be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's not a good plan. Yeah. I think that one was popular. Another year in the All right, moving right along. So, um, <laughs> I, I have a question about those uh, uh, projects, facility um, projects. Um, apparently, we looked at, but I didn't see San Pedro. Anything on San Pedro? Uh, no, and it, you know, really good question. I've just been talking with Bob about San. You didn't see Bahia Vista either. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no. We uh, we have not initiated any of the projects at San Pedro yet, and partly because of the TK focus, where they had all, they already have all their TK facilities, mm -hmm. and so we were not initiating any contact with them to get going. Mm -hmm. We are looking at dealing with, they have a whole bunch of master plan projects. As an example, in the, in the master plan is a shade structure for outdoor eating. It's a key priority yeah. for the site. Oh, yeah. we talk about um, and air conditioning in the yeah. other two wings that they have not been done. So we know we have work to do there. The field is in terrible shape. Yes, it is. And we, Bob and I and Dave Pedroli have been working on looking at both short-term fixes and initiating some planning about how to do the long-term field upgrades um, at, at the site. So we will be in, we will be getting with them at, at the start of this school year. And so, yes. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really concerned about that field. Even if it's short term, mm -hmm. something needs to be done right away. Yeah. It's needed. Mm -hmm. We talked about some um, solution at San Pedro that can be started this summer. Awesome. And we'll at least um, provide a better situation for students for the next year or, or two while we work through what the end product I will look like. to get done. Okay. We know that there's a sense of urgency. And, yes. And I've walked that field yes. myself and, yeah. and, you know, two or three twisted angles later, uh, you know, so <laughs> yeah. we can know I, it's a problem. Can I ask you, yeah. because I understand that at San Pedro also uh, neighbors share their concerns. What is the process when neighbors uh, complain? So I'll take what that you one. Guys, so what do you do? In, so neighbors complain uh, sometimes about noise, usually it's different okay. parts from campus. So they usually start with the principal. Principal mm -hmm. deals with it. The parents either like it or don't like it. Then if they don't like it, they usually come to me. So then I'll meet with them and talk to them and kind of see what they're. So they can let our kids play. One of the, the problems at San Pedro, frankly, with the neighbor uh -huh. was valid. I felt in terms of their two concerns were using a megaphone and using music, amplified music and PE every day. We okay. don't do that at any other campus. Um, so. So we're gonna we won't be doing that part of it. Are we doing the music? If we need to do music, we'll do it in the multi-purpose room or whatever. And some, frankly, I think are unreasonable requests from parents because, like at Sun Valley, there there was a PE teacher who has a loud voice. Well, you know what I mean. That's not using a megaphone. It's not you know trying to keep it down, but you have to That's talk okay. to the kids. So so, really so they start with the okay. principal and they work, meet with the principal. They either like what the principal has to say or don't like what the principal has to say, and then they usually come to the superintendent for follow up and 
sometimes their concerns are valid and sometimes they're not. So we just try to work with them and see how it goes. And if it's related to construction specifically, then it would be myself and the director of capital facilities that are you know, talking with those people or trying to figure out how to mitigate their concerns. Okay. Really happy to hear that San Pedro will be taken care of. Okay, thank you. So uh, the last uh, couple of slides are looking at the budgets for uh, each of the uh, bond measures. This is Measure B, 2022, um, and the if you look at, you might want to follow along on the worksheet that that we handed out. Um, <laughs> For the high school district, we're proposing only to um, include an additional revenue to the program, anticipated revenue of 2.45 million in interest on funds on deposits. The last measure at the high school district, we received over 3.4 million in interest for that program. And the master plan did not have any uh, interest income proposed in it. So the initial budget is on the left side. Any budget adjustments for expenditures is in the center and the adjusted budget is in the right. And we're not proposing any budget adjustments for the high school district at this time, other than the change in revenue. So we, we have an unallocated balance at the high school district and with the long-term interest earned at 2.45 million. You see that at the bottom. It's a little more complicated um, for, uh, let me, I'm going to come back to the schedule. Let's do the other budget item. It's, a, it's a much more complicated for the elementary district. The uh, Again, the left-hand column for numbers is what was in the master plan in total of 152 million. You can see each of the projects and their individual budgets by site uh, throughout uh, their master plan budgets. Because of the additional TK facilities, we're proposing adjustments, for example, to Coleman. You can see the adjustment for two TK classrooms is to add 3.747177 uh, to that budget. Where one of the things that we're proposing to offset that is to delay or defer uh, the artificial turf field at the site. So you'll see a negative 800,000 as a proposed adjustment there. We've tried to keep adjustments as if we can within the context of each of the projects. Um, but if some of them are accomplished through additional income to the program. So if you look at the top for the revenue for the program, we've added estimated interest, 2.6 million. So on the last elementary bond, we received uh, 2 million, 12,000 in interest on 108 million. And this is 152 and interest rates are higher. So we've added that as a uh, anticipated uh, revenue. And then we're, we finally received all of our state funds for modernization at the elementary district, finally, um, after the projects were long done. But the, the, after we reimbursed the previous bond, then those state funds would essentially be used in this bond. That's a total for Davidson, San Pedro, and Venetia Valley of 5272105 additional revenue. So um, total uh, uh, of uh, 7 million uh, or 7,800,000. So we're also looking at, um, uh, as you can see, a set of budget adjustments that primarily relate to TK facilities at Sun Valley, three TK facilities, additional 5.17 uh, million dollars in proposed uh, expenditure budget. And so this is what we're proposing to bring to you tonight. Uh, and uh, at Davidson right now, you'll see we added the remainder of the annex roof and the HVAC project um, because we were out of sufficient funds to enable to us to encumber that contract under the previous bond. We're proposing an update. We got a, an estimate for the full field at $4 million. We're proposing to update that budget to, and that's the project budget there at 4.4. So these are total project budgets. These include construction and all soft costs. We're proposing to reduce the modernization amount for the annex and it's partly because we're 
completing all of the air conditioning in the annex. We just put in heaters five years ago, new, new furnaces that will connect to the condensers. And we're proposing to do the roof, for the full roof of the annex is in that HVAC project at the top of the Davidson list. So our modernization, if we leave ourselves 3.3 million to do the modernization at the annex, we'll look at upgrading the bathrooms for ADA and the new finishes interior paint, new ceilings, new flooring, and we can fund that given the small size of the site only has uh, eight, nine classrooms, I think. So we can we can adequately modernize that site for our proposed 3.3 Are we keeping the uh, portables there or will we get it? <coughs> we are keeping them currently. We, we don't have any plans to move them. Okay. I don't okay. even know how they're being used right now. Do you, Bob? I think they're being used by our after yeah. school yeah. program. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. yeah, but I think steel upgraded. pans is in one of those, and then the other one I think is after school stuff. And they'll be upgraded too. Yes, that's part of the modernization. Okay. Do we uh, we own those buildings? I believe so. I think we do. Okay. So these are the proposed budget adjustments that are in, on your agenda tonight uh, as an action item. I just want to take one more second to make sure that part of the. Um, the, the schedule for the projects for this uh, bond measure are highly dependent on the bond issuance schedule. We can't do all the work at once. Our bond issuance schedule is uh, in 22, 24, 5, 26, 7, 28, 9. So we have a staggered program schedule that starts with our TK facilities, starts with the Davidson MPR, and then the next step, so is to do our phase one modernizations at Coleman, at Sun Valley, at Davidson. So we, we have to stagger the work because we can't get all the money at, at the same time. And so that's a key thing to consider as we go forward. And it's the same way at the high schools. At the high schools, the aquatic centers eat up a pretty big chunk of the cash flow at both sites. And as soon as we're done with that, we're going to go right into visual and performing arts upgrades at San Rafael and then the classroom modernizations uh, here at Terra Linda. And that's my report tonight. Thank you for being so patient and going through all that. So before I turn it to the board, uh, I want to see if there's any public comment either in the room or online on this staff report. Seeing none. Okay. Any additional questions from the board? So this is going to be an action item mm -hmm. to vote on some of the changes to the to the budgets. Um, but any anything else that I mean we did ask questions throughout. So if there aren't no, yeah, I just them. have one comment. Well I have one comment and one another comment. Um, I want to thank you and Carolina, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And and the staff, yeah. we your team, because you've kind of been floating along without a facilities director yeah. or bond manager. So, um, but this is amazing and, and wonderful to see. So I'm glad we've got this. With the new pool facility, I uh, live near Marin Academy and I've noticed that their pool is available for lap swim through the Mount Tam, through another organization, but it's public. So the public can you know buy in, but whether, it's just something to think about mm -hmm. as we go Social through media. is how we can have it be this beautiful new facility be accessible to the community. Exactly. So our, our community partners at both sites have been involved in the planning. Uh, Swim Marin. Swim Marin. Um, what's the other one at Center Fell, Bob? I'm trying to remember. But we've had outside groups have been a part of the discussion mm -hmm. and in there and been heard and, and talked to on both. Uh, both but it's sides. just structuring. How does that happen? We had it when I first moved here 30 years ago. We could, San Rafael High School pool was open, but it was, we, the school district did not maintain it. It was mm -hmm. absolutely pigsty. Um, and the city finally pulled out of that partnership because it wasn't anything they, you know, it was dangerous. But we're going to have a beautiful, stunning operation, mm -hmm. and it should be open to our larger community. So how we structure it, I don't know, but I would love to see that. And I'll, I'll just say, Trustee Jackson, that the point about public access has been raised a few times at our meeting. So it is something that is being considered, and I think it, um, as of most, most things, the devil is in the details. Mm -hmm. And the first thing is to get a beautiful facility, and then, you know, to your point, they're... Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll have to work. figure it out. Yeah. There will be no shortage of 
Minimal users. Yes, yes. yes. Well, that'll be very much so. <laughs> Okay, that's all. Thank you. Any great. other questions or comments, Marina? I, I do have a question. Just because I'm not really into numbers, uh, I have a question. Uh, first about the facility, the annex at Davidson. What are the updates for the annex? Because I know that it's been it's really an old building. Yeah, it's um, we did a, a a light modernization on the annex in 2017, right before we moved Laurel Dell into it for transitional housing. Um, and so the, and we're currently doing this summer, it's getting a whole new roof and it's getting air conditioning added to all the classrooms. So the rest of the modernization for the site, it's one of the buildings at Davidson that has jealousy windows. So new windows, um, and new flooring, new ceilings and new lighting led. We're going to, we're putting led lighting in at every site now as part of the it's required and so it but it's uh it's much more energy efficient and it's uh there'll be an upgrade on those costumes they're a little dark um sometimes yes, yes they, and mm -hmm. the portable will continue there because they yes. do have a portable mm -hmm. on the side mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay uh, my other question regarding these boom measures I, I read it from 2015 so um how long are they good for well i mean the, to, to use this money since it's from 2015 well, there's not, well, there's not a specific work? limitation on the use and, unless there is a potential for arbitrage where the district might have been oh. holding on to the funds in order to garner interest that would put them at uh, risk for some federal and IRS intervention. But we have a very small balance in the 2015 bonds, very small. Mm -hmm. It's like I could pull my pockets out. Kind of thing, right? mm -hmm. um, well, when the last sale of the 2015 bonds was probably not that long ago. It wasn't that long ago. Because yeah. you you sell the bonds and you uh -huh. get some of the money and that process goes over like an eight year period. Oh, so the 2015 the bond. It, 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 it's a period, so that the slide, where is it? It's this side, the, the bond issuances. So imagine this, but for 2015, where you're, you're selling off bonds at different times. So you're receiving money at different times. Um, so that you have enough cash to do the projects, but um, so it's not one time; it's actually kind of it's ongoing phased. in a way. It's yeah, phased. it's phased. Yeah. Okay, because it's based on the the sell of the bonds. Mm -hmm. So the last sale could have only been a, a couple, two or three years ago for that. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. So I just have a quick question. So in the, the slide about maintenance and operations facility, where you are thinking about the space that it's um, where we have storage, it's like the space that we're considering for all the projects. Is that for the so? And there's no like overlap with the improvements. And no, actually, there was kind of vacating like, that side of the yard. Okay. That north. Mm -hmm. They call it the north. Courtyard, yeah. Where this plan mm -hmm. completely eliminates our need for that yeah, for the heart. part of the problem. Okay, mm -hmm. so there's you. You we're are not improving that part. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There's nothing there. Okay. Just, just one. I'm, I'm sure you knew, but I kind of wanted to make sure. Um, and the other quick thing is like um, the district office. I think that there, you went through some very small like things here, which. I'm like, can we do more, right? Because for example, like the kitchen is inside the superintendent's office. <laughs> so I, I'm sorry to be very blunt about this, but like, I mean, like our personnel and our staff deserves a proper kitchen and not like a small hallway with a microwave. I, I am, I, I, I don't know, I, none of them have told me this, by the way, this is just me coming, you know, once every two weeks. <laughs> um, for board meetings, but you know, in the state of affairs where we are right now, where you know people in the, the place of work are trying to really improve the conditions where people are at, um, I I don't know how we factor this in. I don't know, but I would love to see a kitchen area at least for the staff and outside the superintendent's office, like I at least a sink. Um, I I would love to see that. I think it's not fair to anyone. We, we do have a kitchen. Yeah. It's, it's, it's off a, of the assistant superintendent's office. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I, you know, none of those folks should have a kitchen center. <laughs> well, let's begin with that. We, we, have, um, we have a number of- uh, I mean, not to the, this, and this is not like a horrible, but I, I just think that you all, like you could use like a little love, yeah, right? Yeah, yes, no? yes, well, totally okay. do. Okay. And, and I think one of the key things that we're gonna do yeah. is wait until the new superintendent comes. Okay. And well, really, thanks, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> and really get, uh, so focus in, from that is great. Later, from later. I, also, I needed to hear. I am sure that I'm not the only one observing this, but I just wanted to support. We have a bunch of ideas for okay. different areas okay. and how we can That's improve it. the flow for our community coming in. For example, mm -hmm. enrollment oh, office. Oh yes, yes, that, yes. Welcome yes. me. Welcome exactly. me. Exactly. Yes. So we have a bunch of ideas, but we want to, We really want to wait until the superintendent uh, is in place. Is here to really explore that. Lovely. Community. I'm so in love with it, all of us. It's great. Congratulations <laughs> on all the work. I am so happy. I don't have any questions because I already asked you all yeah. that <laughs> in our other meetings. And so, thank you for doing all that work. Yeah. Thanks for listening to me talking about facilities. You. Oh, Jim wants to make all right. Yeah, no, I just really want to thank you, Bill, because mm -hmm. uh, Dan left, like you said, about four or five months ago. Yeah. You have been incredible. Yeah. You've been incredibly professional. You're hardworking. Mm -hmm. You're super collaborative. You work with Bob on things. You work with you know, you, you, you know what you're doing, yes. but you have such a great way about you in terms of working with people. Mm -hmm. And I know you actually work for Ben Pelt, but it feels to us a lot of times that you're working for <laughs> uh, And that's one of the reasons we're actually hiring a new director because it's not really fair to put you in the position sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's not fair to put you in a position where the neighbors are yeah. saying, hey, why don't you build a fence? Or hey, why don't you do yeah. this? So, but through the, you just have been fantastic. Yeah. And we are really lucky to have had you working with us. I'll second Thank that. You. Bill is extremely responsive and answers to all of my questions so yes. um, thank you bill thank um, you okay we are does anyone need to take a short break before we get into the discussion action items or can we keep going because I, I will just say if you need a bio break like we had to take just go go for it <laughs> so, um okay let's go to discussion action item number one capital facilities program Recommendation for approval of adjustments to capital facilities program budgets, measures B and C. Uh, I'm seeing this is Bob, although we did just get the preview. Anything you want to add before we okay, take a vote, vote on this? We will have to vote uh, on this. Uh, yes, we're now on the um, action item part of it. Ah, uh, we're on the action agenda. agenda. For the budget. Honestly, I, I don't know that I, there's anything I can add that Bill hasn't already said. So. Okay. With that in mind, I'm going to see if there's any public comment either in the room or online. Thank um, With that, I will see if we have a motion. I move that we approve the adjustments to capital facilities program budgets for measures B and C. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Moved by Vice President Martel Dow. Do I have a second? I'll second. Seconded by motion. Trustee Palma. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, the motion passes. The next item is approval of received donations to San Rafael City Schools. Bob. Yes, we have a generous donation from Miriam Gerber of a Roland synthesizer valued at $500. Um, and it was made to, I'm trying to see if there's a school, Serifal High School. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> it's right there. Uh, yes, yeah, so Serifal High School is going to be practicing its 80s uh, yes. cover suit songs. Oh, I think they said, oh, I see. They did. It's and, one of those. Oh, yeah. cool. Uh, no, I, think it's just like, I think it's just a keyboard. That's like, yeah. cool. That's cute. Okay. But anyway, thank you to Miriam Gerber for her uh, great donation. Yes, yeah, and to Tasha. Thank you, Miriam. We always, um, so as most people know, the reason why we like to have board approval of this is because we so appreciate our community members who step up for our students and provide these very generous donations. Mm -hmm. um, is there any public comment either in the room or online on this item? Seeing none. With that, I will look for a motion to approve receipt of these donations. I'll move approval of receipt of these donations to Center of the High School. Trustee Jackson has moved. Do I have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Vice President Martel Dow. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, it passes. Mm -hmm. Third item is approval of local control and accountability plan, mm -hmm. also known as the LCAP 2023-24, and together 2024 executive summary for the elementary school district. Jim or Stephanie? Or um, so no, we, we saw mean, it yesterday. Yeah, and I did. Uh, if you saw, I did try to incorporate some of the suggestions. Linda, mm -hmm. you had a few. Let's see, mm -hmm. you had a. Two or three of you guys had some ideas, and, um, and we also added the safety 
part into, I thought that was a great suggestion for MTSS behavior and to facilities on running drills, which we run anyway, but it's good to capture it in there. He has the stuff about feedback for feedback to the kids and mm -hmm. making sure that they mm -hmm. actually yeah. do something. And then you had a couple other ones that are escaping me right now, but I tried to put them in there. One, one of them had to do with um, the fact that we did have a um, equity audit in the past, which is yeah, what the Together exactly. 2024 mm -hmm. was based on. Mm -hmm. I mean, my recommendation to Carmen will be to actually um, revisit that equity audit. There were 60 something you know, recommendations, yeah. which we then formed the blueprint committee that tried to narrow those down, you know, to four or five different areas. But it might be helpful to revisit that some and see mm -hmm a lot of it we've done and maybe there's some other we want to do or whatever so again i think forming that working group and passing that on to carmen mm -hmm. and her vision for for kind of how to I move mean, we got some immediate things in place that i think tyler and stephanie explained with you know the need to do some training but there's really kind of a bigger picture that we need to do but i think linda you made a good point it's not like we haven't done anything and it's not like we don't we weren't building on an equity audit already we kind of just took a hiatus from um with really COVID and now we need to bump that up on the priority list and determine what exactly we want to do. So I think it's perfect timing for Carmen coming in to work together with you guys to see where that should go. Okay. So maybe that's a work in progress. Yeah. Do we have any public comment on item 10.3, the LCAP approval and together 2024 executive summary for the elementary school district, either in, in person or online? Seeing none. I will look for a motion. <clears throat> No, I'll make a motion to approve the LCAP for um, the elementary district and the Together 2024 Executive Summary. I noticed you also expanded it beyond just racist behaviors, but you included bias in general. So it's going to be able to um, include all the groups. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Is that a thing this morning talking about Asian hate? So um, that, that allows for that broader discussion. And I saw where the other comments have been addressed. So. That's my motion. Thank you, Trustee Jackson. Do I have a second? I'll second. Um, seconded by Vice President Martel Dow. All those in favor of approving the LCAP plan for 23-24, the Together 2024 Executive Summer, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, it passes. And now I will look for uh, public comment, either in person or on online for approval of the Local Control and Accountability Plan 2023-24 and the Together 2024 Executive Summary. Do we have any? For the high school district. Uh, I will now look for a motion. I move that we approve um, the, the Local Control and Accountability Plan for 2023-24 and the Together 2024 Executive Summer for the high school. Moved by Vice President Martel Dow. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Palma. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, it passes. Next item is business services approval of the 2023-24 elementary school district adopted budget. Yep. Bob, anything to say about this before I open it up to public comment? We no, did it yesterday I mean, I, I, <laughs> for I, I, Monday. Hopefully you, you've yeah. been able to look at the uh, the uh, narrative mm -hmm. between now and then I had, didn't hear other concerns or questions or anything. So, um, you know, I have Ty Lowe here, if any of you have questions now, um, but we're, we're feeling, feeling pretty good about it. Okay. With that, I will look for um, a public comment either in person or online. Seeing none. Can I make one? Yes, I'm oh, sorry. I know mm -hmm. you guys have seen this and Bob has mm -hmm. reinforced it. But I do think it's it, it is important to look at the ending fund balance, which goes in the mm -hmm. elementary from what twenty five million down to ten ish mm -hmm. over the next three years. Yes. That's a huge, so yeah, you it's know, a and I know issue. we we the board and I think rightly so prioritized um, funding our teachers and, and other groups as well. The the high school district pretty much stays flat. In fact, it actually goes up yep. by a million or so. So I think that one is in good shape, but. It really is going to be important, and Bob keeps saying this, so I just thought it'd be nice for somebody else besides Bob. I, I appreciate you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried about spending. I appreciate I'm, 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 I think you need to tighten your budget. <laughs> no, I appreciate you bringing it up. Yeah, no, I mean, it's something to take a look at, and I know that, you know, we're going to have to look at instructional coaches and intervention teachers and all that stuff, but a $15 million cut ish because you never know about the third or fourth year but that's mm -hmm. really something to take a, a look at in elementary so just wanted to reiterate that 
Thank you, Superintendent so Hogan, and that's why we do multi-year projections so that we can understand, um, knowing that the future is sometimes uncertain, we try to project so that we understand the decisions we make and the impact they make. Yeah, we, we do the course correction starts. No. Yes, absolutely. As it does every time we get more information. So when we get the final budget, when we get the fun, yeah, everything, there's, we're constantly course correcting. So um, with that, I will look for a motion to approve the 2023-24 elementary school district adopted budget. So I move that approval um, for the elementary school district for 23-24. I'll second. Moved by Trustee Jackson, seconded by Vice President Martel Dow. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, it passes. And now I will look for public comment in person or online for approval of the 2023-24 high school district adopted budget. Seeing and hearing none, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I will look for a motion. <laughs> so moved. I move that we approve the 2023-2024 high school district budget. Moved by Vice President Martel Dow. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Seconded by I'll Trustee move. Palma. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, it passes. Now we're moving to finance approval of revised AB 1200 public disclosure for certificated administrators and classified management. Jim, I think you yeah, want thanks. to go first and then Amy. Yeah, so I just want to make some general comments and then I'll turn it over to Amy to make some more specific comments about the uh, compensation <laughs> study and how it all works out. Um, I think the board has done a great job of prioritizing all of our employee groups and they're all equally important. So starting with SRFT, mm -hmm. um, you know, they got a 5% last year and with the extra day um, for, we're adding a professional development day, which is really important. So Tyler, we've been working the elementary, as you know, has a lot more PD than high school, but, and, and actually to the credit of Tyler for making sure that we're running high quality mm -hmm. professional development. They agreed to the other day. It's not something that's really usual. So, you know, 11 and a half percent for SRFT, I would say that the fair share formula is something I feel, one of the things I feel best about in terms yeah. of leaving, working together with Amy and Bob and everybody else and Morgan to, to do that. Um, and that really helped negotiations this year. I mean, we sell them in what, three hours. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a rationale for why you're offering what you're offering besides just, well, we want 10, well, we'll give you three and we'll meet in the middle mm -hmm. kind of thing. So really kudos to everybody involved in that, including the SRFT and, and school services for, mm -hmm. for helping us with that. So in super good shape, I think with the high school, SRTA, obviously a really tough year, but um, one where we gave a little more. So over two years, it's going to be 15.24%. It can compound mm -hmm. the the eight percent to give the three, which which we're going to do, um, and the the elementary union was is their salary schedule is lower than the high school district, so there's a reason for giving more to them than there are. I mean, we do fr frankly lose teachers from Davidson who go work at Santa Fe High because yeah. the salary schedule is a lot different. So um, it was a tough year, and I think that, but I think we came through it well. And again, so they're getting a fifteen point two four, and they have agreed to look at. Um, the seven period day at Davidson and mm -hmm. one of those high things and really thanks to Amy and Bob and the board mm -hmm. for staying firm on that one and making sure that we're, that's going to make a big difference for a lot of people, not only for music and for um, ELD and special ed people that have yeah. one, at least one or two electives. Um, and they're going to be SRFT, SRTA has agreed to look at the fair share formula. Um, and I think that would really help if we can do that. And we have a year off to kind of just take a take a breath and okay. see where we are. Yeah. Um, the classified, I think um, the board has consistently shown since I've been here that the classified staff are really important. They're a smaller part of the budget. Um, they do some of the hardest jobs for some of the lowest pay. They received a 5% this year. And so clearly next year, they're going to need some love as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I know the board will take care of that. And I think Bob's already talking about that. Tanya is a great person to work with. And so I know we value our classified And I as think well. also with the classified, um, one of the important things we've done uh, that this board has done is also mm -hmm. done a job study to make sure that there are career tracks and that we're benching mm -hmm. these jobs appropriate to the market and making sure that um, there is a career path for everyone because that's really critical for all of our employees to see. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to add that. That's perfect timing also because so so all, you know, our teachers are super important, our classified are really important, but our administrators are also important. 
sometimes, um, to be honest, we got a few emails from some parents saying like, why, why are you giving the, the management, you know, more money and the teachers had to fight really hard and management, you know, usually management CSE, you kind of get some kind of a me too thing. So, um, what we're, what's in this package really is a 5% retro for, for management mm -hmm. for this, for the 22, 23 school year. And then as Amy's going to talk about, um, you know, looking at the compensation study and doing the restructuring, going from six salary schedules to one, looking at what fair market value is and all that. Uh, but I will just say that this isn't being a, an administrator, especially a site administrator, it's really, really difficult these days. It's way harder than I was a principal, probably even harder than a couple of years ago when Bob was a site principal. It's really difficult. The behaviors we're seeing at schools because of COVID are completely different than they were before. You know, if you go to any school and you see the kids in the office that the principals are, are helping to deal with behaviors, it's, it's really wild. Overwhelming. And we are hiring another board certified behavior analyst position next year. And that purpose of that person is to come in with the team and help teachers when they have some kids yeah. that really are high needs and they need some help. They don't know what to do with those students. So the, the number of behaviors, parents are sometimes very, uh, even though we love working with our parents, they're sometimes unreasonable. And that's hard for, for yeah, principals to deal with. Mm -hmm. There's so many different factors. There, there's, there's racism, there's homophobia, homophobia there's anti-Semitism mm -hmm. that are happening all the time. There's behaviors, there's special ed. So the pressures on our principals are incredible. And it's getting harder and harder to find principals, especially mm -hmm. at all levels, but especially mm -hmm. at high school. Um, Tam and Novato both had principal openings at Novato High and at Tam this year and are having a really difficult time finding a principal. And so we're lucky with Katie and Joe uh, and with Michael at the middle school. It's really a difficult job. It is so demanding. It is so challenging and exhausting. So all that to say that our teachers and our classified staff are vitally important to our schools, but our principals and our administrators are vitally important as well. And it's important to take care of them and to, to make sure that we can attract the best because it really does start with the principal. The principal run, you know, sets the tone for the whole school and we've got to have great principals. And I think we do. I think the quality of our principals is the best in the county, quite frankly. Um, and so Amy will talk about it more, but it's not... It shouldn't be, you know, classified or teachers or administrators. And sometimes people are like, oh, well, district office administrators, like it's not, it's, it's really important. And we need to have those people that are in leadership positions. We need to compensate them fairly as well. Mm -hmm. So that's just my little, and I think we're doing that. I just wanted to give that overview. And then Amy's going to talk a little bit more because um, I think addressing some of Morgan's concerns, but I think that compensation study was done for, with a very specific goal in mind that it's important to know about, so I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, you only took like 50% of my notes. Sorry. So, <laughs> I'll try and fill in the rest. Yeah. Um, so just to summarize, there's, there's two actions we're asking the board to take tonight. And so for the year that's ending now, we're asking for 5% for all administrators, certificated and classified, wherever they currently are, so 5% on their current salary retroactive to July 1st. So that'd be a 5% increase for everyone in for this school year. Yeah. And then prospectively for next year, we're asking you to adopt the new career paths um, and the salary schedule that's attached to the agenda. Um, I wanna make a point on the career paths. The career paths does list the superintendent as the highest skill grade position in the district. But it's important to note we're not proposing to put the superintendent on the salary schedule. That, that's just there so that you can see the career path that the consultant were, um, developed. And you would have that option in the future if you ever wanted to do that. But we're not proposing that for, for tonight. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. so just some, um, some points about the process. So we worked with the same consultant who did the uh, CSEA job reclassification mm -hmm. study last year. Um, and so he did a few things. He reviewed all of our administrative positions. He gathered data. The data was looking at cost of living and our comparative districts, our comp districts, and the demographics of the district. Um, he came up with the new schedule, which again, we go from six different salary schedules. The classified schedule ended at seven <clears throat> steps and the certificated schedule ended at 10 steps. He's proposing one uh, uniform salary schedule that has 13 steps. So it has more long-term growth for our existing employees that stay and have longevity. Um, and it also allows us to continue to be competitive in hiring. So 
Um, so again, tonight, what you'll look at is um, the career path and the salary schedule. And then if you <coughs> adopt those things tonight, the next step will be to continue meeting with each individual employee and determine where the day will be placed. Um, I do wanna reply to some of the comments that Morgan made because when he's saying principals are getting this raise and um, other positions are getting this raise, everybody's getting a different raise based on where they are on the salary schedule, how many years they've been here, and where their job came out in the study. Some jobs were determined to be underpaid for the market. Some were at the right level and some were frankly a little high. So the consultant ranked those on the skill grade based on the study that he did. Um, the other thing uh, I wanted to talk about that Morgan addressed was the salary schedule is not square. So what that means is at the beginning of the schedule, there's purposely larger steps. So if you're coming into administration and you're early in your career and you're at steps like one through four, you're getting a 5% step increase each year. As you get to the top of the schedule, it gets much smaller. So the top few steps are 1.75 between steps as an example. So it's purposely designed to move people up faster at the beginning of their career versus the steps at the end. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's see what else. So the total cost of the whole implementation is 5.2%. So as a unit, the cost would be 5.2%. That means that doesn't mean that everyone's getting a 5.2% increase. Some people will get less. Some people will get more depending on, on the consultant's recommendations. But the cost overall it would be commensurate with other groups at 5.2%. Anything else? I don't think so. Okay, um, I will look for public comment either online or in the room on this item. And we did hear a public comment, um, but Morgan's on his summer break. He's allowed to give public comment a little early. Um, anything, Christina? Um, I just wanna add that we, if you choose to make a public comment, please use the raise hand feature. Yes, join, okay. see, see none. Okay, mm -hmm. um, and I will say that I think uh, Superintendent Hogan said this, but we did receive a couple emails about this as well. So just wanted to acknowledge that. And um, as we have stated, we that the board policy is that we do not read emails that we receive, but we do include them in the meeting minutes. Um, so just uh, that's how mm -hmm. we, we deal with those communications. Do we have any comments on the board? And if, if not, I will look for a motion. No. Oh, I'll move that we approve the new salary schedule. Um, what is it? Is so it's thing? number seven. It's number seven, yes. Oh, so it's interesting how it's worded. Approval yeah, or revised, right. maybe? Bob, do you want to? Do you you know, yeah, I, 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 yeah so on public disclosure. Is, it, is that the? Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll move that we approve that item. You want me to explain it? I can't. Uh, no, it's okay. okay. Approval of it's revised AB 1200 public disclosure for certificated administrators and classified management. Do I have a second? I'll second that. I'm really impressed with the management and classified employees that we have. Lots of respect and, and the work that I see with a lot of them. Yeah. And they're actually the ones who also uh, uh, build the path for our kids' education and everything that they put up with, even myself, you know? <laughs> I, I mean, they deserve definitely with this. Your joy, experience. Marina, your joy. No, really. Well, I mean, really. Uh, and this Come will on. include the 5% retro, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. Moved by Vice President Martel Dow, seconded by Trustee Palma. All those in favor of approving a revised AB 1200 public disclosure for certificated administrators and classified management, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, it passes. And then the Yay. final item is um, Amy, approval of superintendent salary increase. Wow. That would be closer. 2023, 2023. <laughs> so since you just approved a 5% retroactive increase for all management employees, um, I'm recommending that you do the same for the superintendent and that he receive a 5% uh, retroactive salary increase to July 1st of 2022. Uh, I'll, I'll look for a public comment either in the room or online. Please use the raise hand function if you have a public comment online. Seeing none. 
I was going to. But... <laughs> 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 you could, you've been a ringing endorsement, right? Like, why are you saying <laughs> <laughs> well, and I just want to say that I think it was um, important this year that um, until we had settled with all of our bargaining units, so that was a, it was purposeful that we did not settle with our management and our superintendent because we wanted to Painful. settle with all of our bargaining units. And yeah. um, that was our priority. And we appreciate the management's yes. understanding of that. Yes. Yes. So with that, I will look for a motion. I move to uh, give Mr. Huggerman his five percent retroactive increase. <laughs> Do I have a second? Am I gonna miss you? <laughs> and I'll second that. Moved by Trustee Palma, seconded by Trustee Jackson. All those in favor of approving the superintendent salary fees for 2022-23, please say aye. Uh, aye. All those opposed? It passes. Now we're moving to the consent agenda. Does anyone have an item they need to pull? I will look for public comment online or in the room. Okay, I will look for a motion. A motion will be approved the consent agenda. Uh, moved by Vice President Martel Dow. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Seconded by Trustee Jackson to move the consent agenda, consent agenda items one through 21. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, it passes. We are now moving into closed session yeah. to uh, finish up, but uh, thank you everyone. And we will come back into open session at the conclusion of that. We will not be on.